Hey there everybody, Decaf here from YSFlyHeadquarters.com and I've got a super awesome tutorial about animation for you. Because there's just so much going on with animations and we have a lot to cover, I'm going to break this lesson into a few videos to cover all the details. Uh, it's a complicated subject so we're going to need to be patient and stick with what we're learning. Today we're going to be focusing on the fundamentals and cover the basics of animations to get a firm base for later videos. Uh, even if you have a little bit of understanding or experience with animating wise flight, I encourage you uh, to watch this through to help you understand the terminology I use and maybe you'll learn something. One of the first things we need to do uh, in order to animate is look at some examples to begin to understand how everything fits and works together. Uh, let's open up the 737 to look at. By cycling through the frames when pressing the left and right arrows, we can see the pieces move. Uh, these frames are important because they allow us to do Blender's computational power to quickly develop the animations. Uh, by focusing on one piece that's moving, uh, we can see some different things. Notice there are certain frames where the object name at the bottom left corner of the 3D view window uh, changes colors. Uh, notice that this only happens on some of the frames, that's important. These frames are called keyframes because they control the animations. We'll talk about uh, this more a little bit later, uh, but just knowing what they're called right now is going to be useful. By pressing the 6 key at the top of our keyboard, we can see the sixth layer of the .blend file, and that's where all the empties are stored. Uh, empties are essentially coordinate systems that allow us to move things around and rotate them on non-global axes. Uh, this is especially useful for rudder animations or ailerons or ele uh, ailerons, ailerons, uh, those types of things. Uh, to see the normal layer that uh, is rendered in YS Flight uh, and the empties, we can do two things. First, we can press the tilde key uh, right next to the number one key at the top of our uh, keyboard, just to the left of that. Or, what we can do is shift click on the two layers in the layer selector down below at the bottom of the 3D view window. Uh, either method will get us the results that we want, um, but the second option where we're just going shift click the two layers that we want will completely uh, ignore the second layer. And the second layer is where things go that aren't currently animated, such as afterburners or landing gear, things like that that just come out at certain points in time. The last thing that I want to talk about today is a parent-child relationship. Uh, in Blender and in YS Flight, we need to have ways to make complicated animations with some fairly simple tools. Uh, it's a little bit difficult ex to explain, but essentially uh, any object can have a parent, and it'll govern where the object is. It can only have one parent, but that parent object can have multiple children. Uh, additionally, an object that has a parent can in turn have children of its own, uh, and this leads to a whole family tree that can be controlled by a single parent object. So for example, with tail animations on our 737, uh, we can see that just by selecting this one uh, empty, one coordinate system, we can move the entire tail section, and as we cycle through the animation, we can see that none of the animations are broken, nothing's jumping around, and nothing's breaking. It's wonderful. To make a parent-child relationship, we need two objects. Uh, in the example here, I have a mesh and an empty. First, we are going to select the object that's going to become the child. In this case, that's the mesh. Uh, then we select the parent, which, because we only have two things here, must be the empty. Now we're going to press Control p and select Make Parent. Additionally, we can access the Make Parent option menu through the Object menu, so if you like to go that route, you can. Uh, to test our relationship, uh, now we can see the mesh move around relative to the empty. But when we move the empty, the mesh follows it. So that way we can see, okay, uh, we can move the mesh around relative to the uh, empty. But as soon as we start to move that empty, now everything that is parented to that empty is going to move with it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we can use empties to rotate objects around non-global axes. Uh, so what we can do here is rotate this empty around the y-axis to get the child scenery or uh, meshed tip. And then, then we can rotate the child by pressing uh, R, Z, Z. And what that does is it rotates the child object around the parent's z-axis. So in this case, we're just using the empty to create an axis to rotate around. So that's some basic uh, information about animations. 
If you have any questions about what we've covered, go ahead and throw me a comment down below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.